And there's living water in that well. But you know, you could be right next to a well and die of thirst if you don't know how to draw water out. Did you know that? There's people all the time. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say a lot of things. There's people all the time, believers, that many times they substitute. You know the reason sometimes people get active doing stuff? Because they, they're not satisfied with Jesus. Does that make any sense? We are doers. God's called us to do. We're ordained to good works, not to earn, but because we are born again, right? But sometimes we can substitute good works for a relationship with God. Does that make any sense? Sometimes we get so busy because we don't want to hear the nagging emptiness on the inside of us. Are you hearing me? See, if you get busy, you don't hear it. I've, I've noticed when, when it comes to music on the radio, if I turn it up real loud, it's amazing how much I sound like the record. It's amazing. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You know, sometimes you can turn things up that you can't hear the reality. Right. Amen. Okay, so drawing water from your well. Uh, uh, John, John chapter 4. We'll just go there. This is Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman at the well. John chapter 4. I'm going to move this back a little bit so you can hopefully see my, my thing there. That uh, little dry erase board. John chapter 12 and... Uh, or, or excuse me, John chapter 4, verse 10. Let's just do that. John 4, verse 10. Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman at, at the well and having this conversation. And as you know, Jews were not supposed to talk to Samaritans, right? You talk about prejudice and racism. Samaritans were not full Jews. And so the Jews considered them less or to be defiled. N not what they were. How's that, how's that for saying it? Jesus answered and said unto her, well, I'll tell you what, back up to about verse 7. We'll get a running start here. So you kind of see what's going on. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her. In other words, Jesus is at a well. Give me to drink. Give me something to drink. Next verse. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat or food. Next verse. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me which am, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Next verse. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Next verse. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou, leave this verse up please, Thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Now the woman's referring to the physical well, right? And notice what she says. You don't have anything to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then, or how are you going to get this living water? She's only looking in the natural. But how many know Jesus wasn't talking about a natural physical well? He's speaking of a spiritual reality. But I want you to see a couple things. She says a couple words. She says the well is deep. Well is deep. And you don't have anything to draw with. You know, as a born again child of God, you've got a well in you. And it's deep. But you know, once again, you can be right next to a well that has the water that you and I need to live and die of thirst if you don't draw out. You're not teaching, Joel? There was not enough kids. Oh, not enough. Okay, okay. But anyhow, I thought he was teaching. I didn't want you to think I was lying. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All about me. So, and so you notice she says, the well's deep. You have nothing to draw with. How are you going to get this living water? Next verse. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, the woman talking, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Next verse. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever, leave this up, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Now we can camp here. Whosoever drinks of just physical water. Now we need physical water to live, right? It's, we need to drink physical water. It's good for you. We, but, that, but Jesus is saying something very profound here. If you just drink physical water and you don't drink of the water that he has given, you will thirst again. Do you know if you drink of the water that's in your well and you consistently partake of the water that's in your well, you'll never thirst again. Some of you are wondering what that means, don't you? doesn't mean you don't hunger for more of God. Yes, you want, I always want to know him more, but I'm telling you there is a satisfaction and a contentment of the water that the Holy Ghost draws out of you that it's just like, that's why I look at things now. Uh, where's Angie? We were talking about uh, uh, good bands and stuff. And you know what? It's great, but it's just music. whoop de doo da day. It's wonderful. I appreciate basketball talent, sports, whatever, but it's just stuff. 
You know why? Because I'm partaking of the living water. And the living water doesn't cause me to thirst for those things again. You know, as a child growing up, I remember all of my searches. You know, I wanted to be everything from an astronaut to a priest to you name it. I was everything. You know what I was doing? I was searching. And even as a Christian, you can be searching. You can search and be trying to find that living water in ministry. It's not in ministry. It's in Jesus. And the Holy Ghost is the one who helps you draw water from your well. Amen? We have this well, but see, so many Christians, they have this well, they're born again, but they're not drawing the water out. That's why they're constantly thirsty. Going back to what I said originally, some people fill the void with more activity and more good works because they're thirsty. What is it, Lord? If I do this, if I do this, if I don't, if I just do more, more, if I, if I have more pleasure on me, if I do this, and they're always thirsty. That's never enough. The Bible says the eyes of man are never satisfied. That includes Christians who are not drawing water from their well. They're still thirsty. They're constantly thirsty. Amen? But look what Jesus said. Jesus answered her and said, whosoever drinks of this water, just, just physical water, he's going to thirst again. How many know uh, right now? <laughs> I drink water. I'm, I could use a drink. I'm okay. Don't, don't give me a, don't break through like David's men. I have to pour it out. Just a joke. <laughs> Anyhow. But uh, uh, my point is, is when you just, you, you're always, you're going to thirst again when it's just physical water. But I can guarantee you, if you're partaking through the Holy Spirit, then you're drawing water out of your well, out of your born again spirit. I guarantee you, you will not thirst again. Amen. Why do you think we tell you to use your prayer language? What is that? That's drawing water out of your well. I, listen, if it wouldn't be for the Holy Ghost, you know how depressed I'd be. You know how bitter I would be. You know how full of stuff I would be. So would you, and some, some people are. But you know, drawing from the Holy Ghost, it, it just, God puts you in a pavilion. And you, you're not ignorant to things. But I'm telling you, God is, there's water, there's life. We're going to talk about this. You know what water does? A couple of things. It cleanses, right? It refreshes. It does all those things. We'll come right back here. Jump over to Isaiah 43, 19. I want you to see. Uh, I think it's 43, 19. We'll see. Isaiah 43, 19. Watch this. Behold, this is prophecy of the new covenant. Everybody say new covenant. How I many know we're under the new covenant? Not under the old covenant. And the prophet Isaiah says, Behold, I will do a new thing. He's talking about a new covenant. I will do this. Look at this. Now shall it spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now leave it up there. The way in the wilderness is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to, to the Father but by Him. The rivers in the desert, that's referring to the Holy Ghost. How many of this world is a wilderness? How many of this world can be dry? Amen? Can you see it? It's prophecy. Hang with me. It's going to get gooder. You know, I'm going to just say some things. You need the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And if you got it, you need to use it. Because you, if you're not... You know them old pumps? Some of you don't know. I had Those old pumps that they used to pump and all of a sudden it would work and it would bring water up? That's what you're doing when you're praying in the Spirit. You're pumping your well. You're pumping your well. Without that, the, the pressures of life can come in on all of us. And they can overwhelm us. And Satan is a cruel taskmaster. Cruel. Amen. All right. Now go back to uh, John chapter 4, verse 13. John chapter 4, verse 13. We're talking about all these words. Everybody say water. Well. Deep. Draw. Now say wisdom or counsel. And we'll hold off on words. We'll see that in a minute. But I want you to... Jesus answered and saith unto there, Whosoever drinketh of this water, just physical water, he's going to thirst again. That's very true. We have to drink physical water. Next verse. But he goes... Next verse 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. He'll find what he's looking for. But I still haven't... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a flashback. <laughs> You can find what you're looking for. Do you know it's, if you're single, it's not in a husband or a wife. If you're married, it's not in being single. <laughs> Amen? If you're any, if you're, it's not out there, guys. 
The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that the eyes of a fool, excuse me, wisdom is before him that has understanding. But the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. They're always looking out there for what God has given them and is available to them in Christ. They're always looking out there. Do you know if you move to California, after a while it's just the same old, same old. Did you know that? You can move to the most beautiful area and after the newness wears off, it's not. This is why the Bible says we're to walk in the newness of the Spirit. I sat down there and I get so excited about the Word and what God shows me. Because it's, it's life, guys. And it's the Holy Spirit. It's not just this. It's the Holy Ghost. It's praying in the Spirit. It's priming your pump. And water comes up from your well. But see, you know, sometimes you've got to prime it for a while. Uh, don't seem like nothing's happened. Keep priming. Keep priming. Priming. <laughs> priming. Keep priming. <laughs> Keep pumping the pump. Why? Water's coming. Amen. Water's coming. Look at this. But whosoever drink of the water that I shall give, Jesus speaking, shall never thirst. Look at this. But the water that I shall give shall be in him a well of water. Springing up to everlasting life. That's the well Jesus gives. It's a well, but it's springing up. That's your born again spirit. When it springs up, that's the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Now watch this. Go to, uh, I got it right. Proverbs 20, verse 5. We need some good verses here. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 5. Counsel, wisdom, insight. What to do, what not to do. How many ever been there? We're all there, right? I don't know what to do. I don't know what not to do. Should I stay or should I go? <laughs> Damn, another flashback. <laughs> no, no, I resisted that one. <laughs> all right. We used to do that song. But um, uh, counsel and wisdom, you know, we don't know what to do. That's a lot, right? Look at this. Counsel in the heart of man is like, watch this, deep water counsel in the heart of man is like deep water oh I'm going to address another issue here too that's see that dot right there that's to remind me to address something there's people think oh the gospel's just simple like it's simple minded you know that's a lie a lot of people don't even know what simple means now in the, in the world it can mean simple you're simpleton right but in God's economy, it means the single focus. Did you know that? That's why the Bible says if your eye is single, you're not, you don't have dual treasure, which leads to a divided heart. That's what the Greek literally says. And the simplicity you notice in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, where Paul said he feared lest by any means the serpent should beguile Eve through his uh, subtlety, so also your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You know what that means? The single focus on Jesus only and not on a divided treasure. Wow. Amen. I'm so tired. Oh, it's just, it's, yeah, there's a simpleness to it in the sense that Jesus died for you, you need him. Okay? That's, we can all understand that. And we, that's how we need to be when we reach people. That's how we need to be even with the body. But I'm telling you, to say something simple and not profound is to miss the meaning of deep. Deep is also not complicated and complex and goofy either. Deep, you know what deep means? I'll give it to you. When, he, when Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 3 that they would comprehend the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, you know what he's talking about? The depth of God's awesome blessing available to you and I through Christ. That's what he's talking about. That's exactly what he's talking about. But remember these words, water, well, wisdom, and draw, or counsel. So counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. Now look at this. But a man of understanding will draw it out. You can have the counsel in your heart. The Bible says in 1 uh, John chapter 2, verse 20, you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. That's talking about your born-again spirit. How many know our brains don't know all things? Some of us think we do. <laughs> but they don't, right? They don't know all things. But you know, if you're born again, you have the very spirit of, of, of God in you. And guess who does know all things? But you know you're going to have to draw it out. But a man, watch this, but a man of understanding. What is understand? I use this example a lot and it's a good one. Understanding is, is, is knowing why. 
For example, uh, knowledge is don't go out on the road. Wisdom is acting upon that and not going out on the road. And understanding is why I shouldn't go out on the road. I could get hurt. Right? That's understanding. But notice it says, a man of understanding will draw this water out of his well. You know people are usually down on what they're not up on? Did you know that? If you're not up on something, you'll be down on it. I will not back up from the message of the baptism in the Holy Ghost. You, and I will tell you as hard as I can in love, you need it. And if you've struggled to get it, just keep struggling. <laughs> I don't mean that mean. Just keep going. You cannot fail unless you quit. You need the baptism in the Holy Ghost. You need the prayer language. And you need to use it. I'm going to talk about what, what not using it looks like. I'm going to show you a scripture verse. Because having something and not using it is equivalent to not having it. If I have a hammer on the wall and I need a nail pounded in. And I leave the hammer on the wall and I start pounding in with my hand. The hammer does me no good. Amen? This is why you constantly need to be encouraged to pray in the Spirit. Did you know that? You know why? Because a lot of times when you just start pumping it and you start, man, you're getting sweaty and you're getting hot, you're laboring to enter into that rest. I think, man, what's this doing? I mean, they said it would, I thought I would just see angels ascending and descending and everything. Oh! You know, we have that view of God that, man, if I'm serving God, everything's just going to go easy. Don't we have that view? You know, that's usually the opposite of how it is. The writer of Hebrews said that after you were enlightened, you had endured a great fight of afflictions. In other words, things went the opposite. Things went south. Wait a minute, I thought things were going to go good. See, the devil does not want the word established in your heart. Once you're born again, if he can just keep you in a state of carnality where you never go for it in God, that's his second best option. <laughs> Because you will not affect, be effective for the kingdom of God. And guess what, guys? We are called, every single person in here or, and online, you are called by God to change the world. You are called to form your generation. You're called to make a difference. And that's through the Word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost revealing Jesus to the world. Amen. So counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Now, how does a man of understanding draw it out? Go to Isaiah 57 first, and then we'll go to 1 Corinthians 2. 57 verse 19. And we're going to jump from the King James first, and then we'll probably jump over to the Amplified. Isaiah 57, 19 through 21. Watch this. I create, God speaking through the prophet, I create the fruit of the lips, peace, peace, shalom, to him that is far off, Gentile, and to him that is near, the Jew who had received the, the law. Saith the Lord, and I will heal him. Now jump to the Amplified with this verse. God says, I will heal him. I love this. Peace, peace to him who is far off, both Jew and Gentile. To him who is near, says the Lord, I create the fruit of his lips and I will heal him. Watch this. I will heal him. I'll make his lips blossom anew with speech in thankful praise. You know, the Bible says when you speak in an unknown tongue, you're giving thanks well. You can bless with your spirit. Who creates the fruit of the lips? <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, Ernest J. Gruen said this. He's now in heaven. He said, if a man is not built up, he's run down. See, most of the time people live with run down and they don't even know it. They've become accustomed to it. It's like a woman living in an abusive relationship and she gets beat every day and she thinks that's normal. She was brought up that way. I know I'm blowing some of you guys' cover. Just kidding. <laughs> no, she just thinks that's normal. Guess what? That's not normal. That's not good. But notice this. It says, I will heal him. I'll make his lips blossom anew with speech and thankful praise. Next verse. Well, that's good. You went, uh, but the wicked are like the troubled sea. Here's what the wicked are like. They're like the troubled sea, for it cannot rest. How many know God has given us rest? Amen. But how many know the Bible says in Hebrews 4.11, we labor to enter into that rest? What are we laboring for? Against God? No. We're laboring in our beliefs. It's the good fight of faith to rest. I'm wanting to do it, but I'm debating if I should go there because I don't want to put too much on you. I'm getting better at this by the grace of God. Amen? I wanna, the, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm just going to say it to you. The rest is praying in the Holy Ghost. 
Guaranteed. I can take you to Hebrews 4.11. We can look at Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I can take you back to uh, where it's quoted. Uh, that same uh, Greek word is quoted in the Old Testament, which was written in Hebrew in Psalm 90, uh, 95. I believe it's about verses 7 through 11. Right? And there it talks about, it uses the same word, and it talks about they could not enter in because of unbelief, and, and, and it talks about that rest, and it's the Hebrew word manuka, and it's the exact same word that's used in Isaiah 28 for praying in the Holy Ghost. With stammering lips and another tongue will he speak unto this people. Will God speak unto this people? Yet for all that they will not hear. We need to use the prayer language, guys. Amen. It's so powerful, but you don't see the fruit of it right away. Amen? You just, you lie, most of the time you don't. Almost all the time. But you just get in this habitual habit of it. And I'm telling you, down the road you see things, man, I'm not even the same person. What happened there? Praise God. But the wicked are not so, but they're like the troubled sea, for it cannot rest, and its waters cast up mire and dirt. Next verse. There is no peace, saith my God, for the wicked. How many know if you're born again, you're not wicked? But how many of you know that even though you're not wicked, some people, I know a lot of Christians that operate with no peace. And so do you. How many know that's not God's will? I mean, God wants us living in peace. Now go, King James, 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 2. Remember our words. Everybody remember our words. Water, well, deep, draw wisdom or counsel. And we just saw words there too. And that, what did, what did I say? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. King James. But as it is written, as it is written, I hath not seen physical eye, nor physical ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things, leave this up here, which God hath prepared for them that love him. You know what he's saying? And we'll see this in a minute. This is not talking about just when you go to heaven, as many people believe. Now, don't get me wrong. When we're known as we're known, we're going to see a lot of things. But you read this in context and you find out what he's talking about. He's saying, you can't figure this out with your little peanut brain. That's what he's saying. You can't even comprehend the good things of God. See, a lot of times we don't even know what they are. We don't, what is the good things of God? Is it, is it this? Is it that? It's when it's complete wholeness in every area. That's what God desires. Now look at the next verse and we'll see it. But God hath revealed them unto us by our amazing IQ. <laughs> Wrong. <clears throat> by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Leave this up here. Yea, the deep things of God. The depth of His immense love and treasure He has available to you and I. Amen? The Spirit searches that. Now look at this. There it is. Deep. Everybody say deep. Deep does not mean complex. <laughs> but it does mean profound and it means God's love is so expansive you can't even begin to comprehend it without the Spirit of God. So God has revealed it. Then why don't Christians know this? That's a great question. If God's revealed, it says He hath revealed them well through the Word, but why don't we understand this? I'm going to show you. Because we don't use what He's given us to draw water from our well. That's why. We don't prime the pump. <laughs> Amen. Next verse. For what man knows the things of a man, save or except the spirit of man which is in him. Now leave this part up here. Even so, the things of God knows no man but the spirit of God. Nobody knows the things of God except the spirit of God. No, I just beg to differ with you, Chris. I think I do. Why did Jesus tell the disciples and what, before he ascended, after his resurrection, why did he tell them to go to Jerusalem in Luke chapter 24, don't go anywhere until you're endued with power from on high? Why did he say that if the Holy Ghost and the baptism baptism of the Holy Ghost doesn't matter. Why didn't he say, go, man, you guys have been with me. Go to the Christian bookstore and grab the latest book. It's got the 15 steps to how to change the world. How's that working for us? How can a country with over 50%, over 50% of believers vote in pro-abortion politicians? Something's wrong with this picture. It has nothing to do with the color of the skin. It has everything to do with what they stand for. Martin Luther King said it best. I look for a day when a man will be judged by the content of his character and not the color of the skin. I adhere to Dr. King and I agree with that. And that's a biblical principle. Amen. 
I love what Andrew says. He says, you can be a, a, a liberal, you can be born again and still be a liberal, but you cannot love God's word and still be a liberal. It's impossible. Amen. Hallelujah. It's tight, but it's right. You know, we need to say some things. It's the truth. I'm tired of this goobly gobbly love, love, love. Doom, doom, doom. I love love. That's wrong. It's wrong. For what man knows, there is right and wrong. Do you know what New Age teaching is? It's when you become your own God and you establish your own right and wrong. You know what that says? Half God said, hey, I come up with my own word because after all, I'm God. You're wrong. He is. You're not. His word's right. And if I don't agree with it, I'm wrong. He's right. Amen. That's called love. For what man knows this thing? Nobody knows the things of God except by the Spirit of God that's in him. Next verse. Born again, child of God. Now. Somebody say now. We have received not the Spirit of the world. This is why if you're truly born again, it grieves you to be around certain activities. Like I can't, if there's a band that I'm listening to and there are every other word's a cuss word, it, my spirit goes... You know why? Because I'm born again. It's not who I am. I can't be around it. I can love the people, but I can't. There's just something wrong. It's a good indication you're born again. Now, if it doesn't bother you, see if you're born again. You may be extremely carnal and born again. There are those. Or you may not even be born again. And I love you enough to tell you the truth. Because if it doesn't bother you, something's wrong. Hallelujah. Golly, that's good stuff. <laughs> now we have received not the spirit which is of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Leave this up here. Notice it's a little less. It's talking about your born again spirit. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Leave that there, please. We have received the spirit which is of God. Why? So we can know. God wants us to know. Well, I have a Bible. That's all I need. Listen. If, we, if the Bible was all we need, then we would all be walking on the same page. The Bible is the written word of God. I emphasize that, right? But you need the Holy Spirit to guide you into it. See, the Holy Spirit doesn't work independent of God's word. He guides you into God's word. That's why it says the Spirit will guide you into truth and then He'll show you things to come. A lot of people want to see things to come without being guided into the truth. They want to circumvent the truth. God doesn't work that way. Hallelujah. So, now watch this. So, the Spirit of God, so God wants us to know what? The things that we've earned? No, the things that are freely given to us of God. The baptism in the Holy Spirit isn't so, well, i got to pray so long, and then I've earned. I've check off, check off. How long did you pray? I don't know. Keep going. Check off, check off, check off. That's not what it is. It's a tool the Holy Spirit's given you to commune with Him so He can guide you into the truth of the Word so you can see, Wow. Wow, this is what's available to me? You mean he really loves me that much? I was, th I was thinking recently, you know, God loves me even when I'm not good. He he's good even when I'm not. And that just, that boggles my mind. My natural mind goes, Tilt, how can this be? You know why? Because I'm used to the way the world works. The world works, you treat me good, I treat you good. You treat me bad, I treat you bad. God says, I'll treat you good even when you're not good. And say, oh good, I can do what I want now. Well, he said, I don't want you to do that because it'll destroy your life. But if you think you know better, go ahead. I'll give you an example. Yesterday, this is a little thing, but it was a great hassle. We were going to uh, Andy's graduation. And so we stopped. My dad got out of the hospital. He had back surgery. We stopped, wanted to see dad in Fort Laramie. And all of a sudden, I got out of the car and I had to put something in the back. And the kids were going in the car. And I remember, I walked by the, to press the lock button. And I thought to myself, I thought this. I know it was God. I said, why am I locking the car? I'm in Fort Laramie. <laughs> I, I, really, I remember thinking that. Why am I doing this? I'm in the house you know, several feet away from my car. Why would I lock the car? And I remember thinking, no, this, you just locked the car. It's a good thing. Guess what I did? Lock my keys in the car. <laughs> and I know in my heart that God was telling me. My brother Dale had to come. He ran me back to Greenville, got the other set. It was just, but why? Why do we think we know better than God? So many things like that. And you, you don't even recognize it is God. But it was God. I know it was. Because I, I, I can so... You know where my key was? 
that Bible bag I carry, it's in the back. I put something in there. I opened it. That key was in that bag. How did that happen? But if I would have just listened, I said, I'm not going to lock it. Then I said, oh, my keys. Oh, I think I know where they're at. I was in the back of the car. And it wouldn't have been that hassle. I am convinced that God is trying to direct us all the time and protect us from wrong things. I am convinced. But see, we don't know these things. But the Holy Ghost does. Did you know that? That's why it says, He guides you into truth, into the Word of God, and then He reveals things to come. Don't lock your keys. Don't lock the door. You're in Larmy. My nephew's the police chief. <laughs> so he shot all the bad guys, so there's no problem. <laughs> I'm kidding. Now, now we have received, now but we, we received the Spirit, which is God, so we can know what's been freely. Everybody say freely. Given to us of God. Next verse. Now look, here's where, watch this. Which things also we speak, speak, speak. Is that talking about speaking the word? Well, that's very important. We need to speak the word. But it's talking about a different speaking here in a language that God gives you. Can you prove it? Well, let's look at the verse. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing spiritual truths from God's word with the spiritual nature that can comprehend those truths. But if you don't speak it, you won't know it and you'll be locking your keys in the car all the time. Or whatever. I am convinced God's trying to protect us. I saw that again. There's been other things. God is so, even little things he cares about. But you know, I, I remember, I had my own mindset. I'm going to do it. This is the way I always do it. And that's, what, that's where I got in trouble. Next verse. Notice, I'm going to leave this up there. Verse 13. Back up. I'm sorry. Which things also we speak. Everybody say speak. speak. Say it again. Speak. 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 Not in man's wor words which man's wisdom teaches, but the Holy Spirit teaches these words. The Holy Spirit teaches them. Now, right, now verse 14. But the natural man, the carnal man, the sense-led man, doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God. Neither can he know them. That could be a Christian who just lives by his senses. Did you know that? It could be an unbeliever too, and it is, but it could be a born-again believer who chooses to just live by what he sees, what he hears, what he smells, what he tastes, and what he feels. Why? Why? The natural, he will not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. You know why he can't know them? Because they're spiritually discerned. They're spiritually discerned. You can't understand the things of God without the Spirit of God. Amen. It's impossible. Counsel in the heart of man, it's like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Now let me show you this one. John chapter 7. And then Isaiah 12. John chapter 7. And I got some Greek here I want to share with you. What did I say? John 7 verse 37. This, many of you know this, but I want you to see some of the Greek here. In the last day, the Feast of Tabernacles, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, now Jesus got up and bellowed something out, right? Do you think it was important? Do you think it was important? Excuse, um, excuse me. Excuse me. No, Jesus cried. Watch this. He stood and cried, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. Now watch this. In the Greek, the word thirst is in the present tense, which means if he's thirsty... Remember we saw in John chapter 4? If you drink of the water that he gives, you'll never thirst again. You'll be fulfilled. You'll operate. The good things you do will be out of fulfillment, not trying, out of, uh, not trying to be something. Amen? See, a lot of people, even ministry-wise, well, I'm going to get into ministry and that's going to be my identity. Don't do it. <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> Let him be your identity. Now watch this. And the Holy Spirit's the one that makes that happen. If any man thirsts, let, let him come is also in the present tense. It's in the present tense, which means it's a continuous, ongoing action. It's in the middle voice. Uh, Pastor Keith Trump told me that the middle voice, uh, we, we talked about it. He says it means, in this context, would mean, I cooperate for my benefit. Amen? I cooperate for my benefit. And it's imperative. It's imperative that I come to Jesus. But how? Watch this. Let him come unto me and let him drink, which is also in the present tense, but it's in the active voice. You do it and it's imperative, which means it's a commandment. It's imperative. It's necessary. 
It's the only thing that will quench your thirst is the Holy Ghost making Jesus real in your life through the Word of God. Only thing. I promise you. Don't wait until you're 110 years old to find out Jesus was what you're looking for the whole time. All right, next verse. Next verse. He that believeth, and believeth is present uh, tense also, he that believeth on or into me, as the scripture has said, not as your grandma has said, not as your great grandma has said, not as your tradition has said, but he that believes on me as the scripture has said. This is why it's important. If I separate Jesus from the scripture, I'll create a Jesus of my own creation. People do it all the time. Well, you know, Jesus just took him home because he needed another lily in heaven. He doesn't need another lily in heaven. Okay? Heaven, heaven's good. He needs you and I to finish our course. That's what he needs. Because people need... You know, the only reason that the Lord tarries is because he loves people. Amen? God loves people and doesn't want anybody to miss out on it. Amen? He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, koilia in Greek, which means his womb. It's translated womb. His innermost being. That's what it means. For the reproduction manifest from. Shall flow rivers, plural, of living water. Remember, we just, we saw water. It's on our list. Next verse. What's he talking about? But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So what's he talking about? The Holy Ghost. And at this time, Jesus hadn't been to the cross yet. But how many know he's been to the cross? And how many know this is available? And how many know that Jesus wants waters to come flowing out of us? The Greek word there for, I believe it's rivers, is potomas. Can you hear potomac? When the, when the Bible says in Luke 6, when the enemy comes in, it, in Isaiah it talks about that also, but it has to do that with a flood, a torrent of water that God wants to come out of us. You know that when the Spirit's cast out in Matthew 12 and Luke chapter 11, the Bible says he goes through dry places looking for rest and then he finds none so he comes back and he finds that place swept and garnished literally the Greek says decorated for a wedding feast in other words nothing's been put in there he went through dry places but you know if you stay wet with the spirit of God revelating the word of God through you through the prayer language of the Holy Ghost he has got nowhere to he has no place in you Glory to God. <laughs> I think that is good. Now, what about people that have and don't use? <sighs> I'm debating here. I got a couple other scripture verses. Go to uh, Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12. I want you to see this. Verse 27. Verse 28 first, then we'll go to 27. I want you to see this one. In the way of righteousness is life, and in that pathway there is no death. How many like that? I do too. But notice it's in the way, it's in the path, it's in the well-trodden path of righteousness. Next, verse 27, watch this. Having something that God has given you and not using it, this is what it's like. I'm going to give you some Hebrew in these words, but I want to show you this. The sloth or the lazy man roasteth not that which he took in hunting. But the substance of a diligent man is precious. Now imagine, we got some hunters in here that they, they go hunt, hunting, and, right? Hunting, hunting, hunters, whatever. Imagine if you were uh, uh, preparing to get this trophy bull elk. And man, you spent all this time and money and tour guides. And you spent all this money and you went out. And man, you went with, the, and, and you took me along and I was excited. And all of a sudden, man, there it was. You, you just bagged this a trophy world record. Massive. And it's laying there. And I said, Whew, that is awesome, man. What an amazing, amazing trophy you, you've shot there. It's okay, let's go. Where are we going? Aren't we going to get it? No, no, let's get in the truck and let's go. I'd look at you and think, man, you're a few bricks shy of a load. You spend all that time and money. And you, in other words, you don't use what you have. That's what he's saying here. That's what he's saying here. If you have a gift and you don't use it, and notice he says slothful. Well, I'm going to say something here and you're going to have to hear it from the heart. Sometimes a person can be extremely physically unlazy because they're overcompensating for spiritual laziness. Because you can get so busy, sometimes it's easy just to put things on autopilot and not think, right? And not have a relationship. Are you hearing my heart? But see, it's important that we're not slothful in these areas. Some people have searched and hunted, man, I, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, boy, I want it so bad. Finally, I got it and then they never use it. That's the same thing as somebody 
not roasting what he took in hunting, but, but, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. Let me give you some of the Hebrew here word. The word slothful in Hebrew means lackness, slackness, and slackening. Slackness, uh, it means uh, lax, laxness, slackness, and slackening. The word roasteth, this is where it gets good. He doesn't roast what he, he bagged or what he took in hunting. It's the Hebrew word charak, and it means set in motion. It means to start. In other words, he doesn't set it into motion. You can receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, but if you don't consistently set it in motion, I love Linda was telling me about the women's group, and they're getting to pray in the Holy Ghost for at least a half hour a day. Make yourself do it. Your life will change. Amen. You know, by nature, my natural nature, I am a fearful person. By my natural nature, I really am. I mean, I have just stuff like, oh, you know, like, oh, what about this? What about that? But if it would not be for the baptism in the Holy Ghost and praying in the Spirit, I'm telling you, I'd be on the verge of being nuts. So we, some, of, some of you are nuts. That's why you're so mean. I'm not saying that mean. It's the truth. If you're mean, there's something in your heart that's not connecting. People treat other people the way they believe God's treating them in their heart. And if you think God's mean to you and He's rejecting you and He's uh, disregards you every time you blow it or whatever, you're going to be mean to other people. You're going to treat other people why you, the way you believe God treats you. That's why the Holy Ghost is so important. I'm going to come, what, three minutes? We're going to come right back here. I want you to jump over to Romans 15, 13. Watch this one. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. There's so many good verses here. Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope, confident expectation of good, fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Isn't that awesome? How many want some hope? Do you know when people commit suicide and things, you know why? Because they've lost hope. The enemy attacks your hope. Now he perverts your faith if he can through wrong teaching, but his attack is on your hope. Because if your hope goes, faith will have nothing to give substance to. Amen? And that's why, pe that's why people get, quote, discouraged. But God wants you to build yourself up on your most holy faith, giving the Holy Spirit through praying in the Spirit, giving Him access to every area of your life. I thank God I'm in a church that emphasizes this. I thank God. Last night before I went to bed, it was late. And, and Ramin and I were both busy, but you know what? I called him up and I said, I want to knock off an hour. Let's knock off an hour. And go to bed. You don't have to. I don't have to. I'm fine in the nap. But you know what? I know how important it is. And I'm telling you, we got to get past our heads and come from our spirit. This is the whole problem in the body of Christ. You need to go to a lot of Christian bookstores and they'll have nothing on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know why? It's not politically correct. It's biblically correct. Paul, the how many think grace is a big deal nowadays? Grace, grace. That's why there's all these perversions of it. Because the enemy hates it. True grace. But how many of that same apostle of grace said in 1 Corinthians 14, 18, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all. Yet in the church I'd rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. You know you read in Acts 14, the impotent man, Paul spoke five words, get up on thy feet or whatever, however it goes. And five words. I believe there's a connection. Even in the Greek it's five words. But what did he do in his private prayer time? Constantly praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Building himself up on his most holy faith. Giving the Holy Spirit access to every area of his life. Amen. Every area of his life. You cannot know the things that are freely given to you. You can hear about them. And you say, I know that. See, we think just because we've heard a message, we know it. But when you know it, you know it. You know it in your heart. No one can take it from you. Now the God of hope that fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in a confident, joyful expectation of good through the power of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Amen? Isn't that good? Okay, back to Romans or Proverbs 12, 27. We're, we're wrapping up here. We really are. By faith. <laughs> so the slothful, he doesn't roast what he, he doesn't set in motion what he took in hunting. But the substance of a diligent man is precious. Or the riches of a diligent man, somebody who's diligent, someone who's made a strict decision, someone who's disciplined, someone who's made a decision. See, these are not grace cuss words. These are because of grace. Can I tell you something? Your flesh is nuts. It's nuts. 
It could be a great, beautiful day outside and all of a sudden you feel depression. Why? I don't know. Because of the devil works through the lust of the flesh. That's how he works. Watch this. But the substance of a diligent man is precious or prized or splendid or, or it's rare, it's valuable. The substance of a disciplined man, in other words, somebody who roasts what he took in hunting, somebody who dresses the game animal that he shot, somebody who uses what he has, his substance becomes valuable. Can I get a witness? Man, I think that is so good. Now, I had one more, I think. Oh, yes. Nehemiah chapter 1. I want to show you this quickly. I've said this before, but I want you to see it. We are wrapping up. Remember our words as we go to Nehemiah 1.1. 1, 1. Water. Water refreshes. Water cleanses. The well. When you're born again, you have a well in you. The wisdom and counsels in your born again spirit. 1 John 2.20. Through words, we draw deep from this deep reservoir. This deep, this vastness of God's intense love and concern and care for you and I. All right. The words of Nehemiah. How many know even in the Old Testament, there's types and shadows and pictures of stuff? You know, Nehemiah, I'm just going to say this to you. Nehemiah was the king's cupbearer. You know what the cupbearer did? He tasted whatever the king was to partake of to make sure it had no poison in it, that somebody wasn't trying to kill the king. How many know sometimes the things we hear and the things people say to us have poison in them? Amen? How many know the holy... Nehemiah's name means comforter. wonder what that's a picture of. The Holy Ghost. He's the comforter, the counselor, the helper, not the doer. Amen? Amen? So Nehemiah was the king. How many know we're priests and kings? Revelation 1.6, you're kings and priests, the kingdom of priests, you're kings and priests. Ecclesiastes 8.4 says, where the word of a king is, there is power or authority. You're a king, say, I'm a king. I'm a king. That means you have authority. That's why Jesus is the king of? Kings. Who are the kings? His people. Who's the king? Who's the kings? Oh. Nehemiah was the king's cupbearer. Now look at this. The son of Hakaliah, and it came to pass in the month Shishla, in the 20th year as I was in Shushan the palace. Next verse. The Hananiah, one of my brethren. Now I'm not going to go into all this because Nehemiah is a great book. As I mean, uh, there was opposition when they were trying to rebuild the walls, Tobiah, Sambalit, all these things. Which you, There's so many things you could say about that. But I'm just going to say a couple of verses. You know what Hananiah's name means? It was his brother. Can you say grace? Gracious. <laughs> See, the, king, the king's cupbearer, the Holy Ghost, is your cupbearer. And everything that comes at you, like I hear doctrines and I think, man, that sounds good, but something ain't right. And I don't know what it is. I've been involved with groups for a while. And I thought, something ain't right here. And, and it took us a while. You know, and it, and it didn't take God a while, it took us a while. You know why? Is that really God? Or is that me? Should I lock my doors or should I not? I mean, come on. Yeah, just do it. That's what you always do it. That's my law. <laughs> Door locked. Dale, can you take me back to Greenville to get my keys? <laughs> but I got to learn from this. Amen? We need to learn from this. But So Hananiah, one of his brethren, his name means grace. How many of you know that the comforter who protects you and partakes of what you're to partake of wants to do that and protect you from any poisonous, venomous doctrines or words or things that might come to stop you? How many of you know when people say things to you, it can greatly discourage you or it can greatly encourage you, right? But you know the Holy Spirit will comfort you and will protect you. But notice his brother is grace. So he releases, I believe, the grace of God in your life. He's called the Spirit of Grace in Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 29, I believe it is. That's the Holy Ghost. He's the one. Do you, you know you cannot understand grace with just this? It's impossible. You can, you can parrot statements about it. And think, Man, that's good. You can do all that stuff. But without the Holy Ghost, you can't. Now, I'm going to say this, and this is strong. If you're born again, you have the Holy Ghost. Amen. But that doesn't mean you're drawn from the well. You draw, the, drawing from the well is the baptism in the Holy Ghost. I said we're not politically correct, but we are biblically correct. I've been at this a long, long time, and I've heard everybody and his brother say things to try to discredit the baptism in the Holy Ghost. That's why Jesus said, you don't go anywhere until you're endued with power from on high. And in Acts chapter 1, it's called the promise of the Father. 
Jesus said, John the Baptist said, I should say, that I baptize you with water, but when he comes, when, uh, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. And fire. You know what I'm saying? The Holy Ghost is the power. He's one who takes the word about Jesus and makes it real into your life. The kingdom of God, one more, is not meat and drink. It's not dietary rules and regulations, but it is. But it is. But it is. It's righteousness, it's peace, and it's joy in the Holy Ghost. And he that in these things serves God, he's acceptable to God. In other words, being led of the Spirit. And he's approved by men. He's proved after testing. I have seen so many things start up in my Christian 31 and a half years as a believer. And they just fizzle out. I've seen people fired up and then they're burnt out. If you let the Holy Spirit, if you consistently have fellowship with Him through praying in the Spirit on a consistent daily basis, you'll not burn out, you'll burn in. Guaranteed. Amen. you got to keep at it. That's why I keep telling you. I'm going to keep telling you. My goal, this message pointed more to it. There's so many more things to say. If you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, use it. Use it a lot. Throughout your day, you know you can sing in the Spirit? Amen. Did you know that? You can sing in the Spirit. You can walk around calling... People don't know. They just think you're talking. You get your headset on. You're talking on the phone. They have no idea. You can sing in the Spirit. You can consistently do the... I know it's time to quit, but can I, can I just throw a quick thing in there, Mark? You got time? Okay, quickly. 1 Corinthians 14. Let me, let me just show you these. Uh, verse 13. I'm not going to belabor these. I'm going to go really quick. Wherefore, let him that speaks in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Now, you can do that privately or in a, in a public setting. We had that this morning. Next verse. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. Your spirit prays. The part of you that's born again prays. The Lord showed me one time. He says, people that don't accept this, their spirit's never prayed. They're born again, they're going to heaven, but their spirit, your spirit prays. Man, that's awesome. The part of you that's changed, the, where the Holy Ghost lives, He prays. Woo! My spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. I don't always know what I'm saying for sure. Never unless He gives me the interpretation. That's why He said pray for the interpretation. Next verse. What is it then? What is the conclusion? I will pray with the Spirit. Notice what's first. And I will pray with the understanding. My, my also. I will sing with the Spirit. How do you sing with the Spirit? How do you sing with the understanding? Just add melody to it. Hallelujah. And I will sing with the understanding also. Next verse. We're almost there. Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupies the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing he doesn't understand what you're saying? Stop. In other words, if you go to a meal and you pray and you pray in the Spirit over the meal, the other guy or gal sitting there going, I don't know what you're saying. He's saying, but watch. He didn't say, look at the next verse. For you verily give us thanks well, but the other's not edified. So when you're around other people, that's not the time to pray in the Spirit when you're blessing the food, right? And then Paul, look at Paul. This is the apostle of grace, guys. I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than you all. Next verse, yet in the church. Well, let me show you the next verse because I want to show you something. Yet in the church, I'd rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice, I might teach others. Also! That means God was teaching Paul through this prayer language. That's why also's there. You know what I get excited about every day? I can pray in the Holy Ghost. No matter where I'm at, I can pray in the Holy Ghost. And what if you stop? No big deal. Start up again. There's no condemnation in any of this. The freer you get from condemnation, the free you are to pray and be who you are in Christ. See, condemnation is what beats you up because condemnation is a lie because there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ. <laughs> look at this yet in the church look at this I'd rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also implying that God was teaching the apostle Paul with this heavenly language I'll show you then 10,000 words in an unknown tongue Keep, next verse brethren be not children in understanding how be it in malice be, uh, be children but in understanding be men here's what I'm after next verse in the law it is written. Now this is quoting from Isaiah 28. With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that they will not hear me, saith the Lord. See men of? 
See the brackets? If you have a King James Bible, you'll see it's italics. That means it's not in the original. Here's what it's saying. In the law, it is written, with other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. <laughs> and yet for all that, they won't hear. I could go back to Isaiah 28, but we're not going to for the sake of time. Now back up to 1 Corinthians 14, 5. One quick one and then we're done. We are done. I would that you all spake with tongues, but rather that you prophesied. Now look at this. I would that you all spake with tongues to a greater degree, is what the Greek says, in order that you may prophesy. Malon, hina in Greek. I would that you all spake with tongues to a greater degree in order that you can prophesy or speak forth the mind of God accurately. That's what it says. <laughs> That's what the Greek says. How do you know? I looked it up. I even ran it by the Greek scholar Keith Trump and I said, Keith, look at this. Am I right? He said, that's exactly right. Amen. I would that you all spake with tongues to a greater degree in order that you can prophesy. Prophecy means speaking forth the mind of God accurately. Are you blessed? Amen. My word.